brilliant thing about that is, you know, how strategy, great strategy, liberates the brand and liberates its communication. Suddenly, you're in a different place, which makes it uh, a more powerful way of working. And this is actually what that's achieved, from a 400 million uh, euro brand to a 1.26 billion uh, in 10 years. The power of difference and the value uh, of difference. Uh, going back to uh, hagen -Dazs, we had the great pleasure of working with them when they launched in the UK. And that was a brand that they were all about, you know, the brand was about, they briefed us, they were dedicated to perfection. And when you get a brief like that, you, you sort of suddenly go, well, you can see the ads, you're all about the ingredients and things like that. And we thought this was a bit boring. We weren't going to change the market. We weren't going to change people's perception. Uh, uh, of a brand if we just went out in that conventional way. So instead of saying dedicated to perfection, we actually said it's dedicated to pleasure. And in doing that, uh, we released a kind of uh, a way of creating advertising that was very, very sensuous uh, and created some very distinctive advertising. Here are three of the ads uh, we did. Intense Fresh and Feel Me. I mean, you know, incredibly different uh, looking uh, food advertising there. Uh, and of course, you know, the results were uh, a 400% sales increase. So, you know, we, we've constantly embraced, uh, hopefully we've embraced difference. And in fact, uh, the very, very first piece of creative work we did for Levi's uh, back in 82 was the launch of Black Denim. Um, and this kind of poster now has been adopted by us, as you can see very cleverly, below it is our logo. We've uh, borrowed from them, thank you Levi's, we've taken this idea and used it ourselves. But the point about that poster is, when you look at it, which sheep do you notice? That one? Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe even that one. However, I bet you noticed that one. Um, that's the power, obviously, of difference. And of course, you know, uh, when we're talking about this, when we're you know, in our world, when we're talking to clients, surely, surely, difference should be page one, line one. That should be the essence of everything we do. It should all be about how are we going to be different. Uh, but sadly, sadly, that is not the case. And uh, we call this uh, wind tunnel marketing. And I'll come back to that. And this is what's happening in our world, wind tunnel marketing. And if you look at you know, here's, a, here's some makeup ads I've just comped together, took the brand names off because why be unfair to people and unkind to them, but I can't tell one from the other. Uh, just incredible, isn't it? Here's uh, uh, hair. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, food advertising, happy families. Let's have lots of happy families. It's all very good, isn't it? It's wonderful. Brand distinction there. Absolutely incredible. That will definitely get you 2% growth. Um, <laughs> And, you know, tech brands. I mean, you'd, think, you'd have thought tech brands would have been at the cutting edge of doing something interesting, but there you are. You can tell one from the other. I think they all use the same photographer, don't they? Don't know who he, who he or she is. Uh, seems odd to me, that. And even uh, when you go to uh, websites, you know, here's a, a, a branded website. Again, look at them. All virtually identical. I mean, no difference whatsoever. Uh, and here it is for food. Um, and it's kind of weird, isn't it? It's this kind of homogenization. This kind of everything must be the same. It's kind of a weird thing that we go through. And I think what it is, that deep down inside us, for some particular reason, we believe we have a fear uh, of difference. Uh, and that's actually driving this kind of work, a fear uh, of difference. But... You know, the reality is, you know, we're here to sell. We're here to uh, provide uh, impact to our brands and create value for our brands. And of course, you know, selling is not a science. It's an art. Now, we have to understand, all those clients are here. I'm sure there are some here. You desperately, I know, want it to be a science. Now, I understand completely. So you can add it all up, put that money in, and get that return. You're desperate for it to be a science. I've got news for you. It's not. And it never will be, no matter what anybody says to you. And what we, result, what we get is this whole left brain thinking, don't we? We all know these words about evaluation, pre-testing. God, I don't have to go down them. We suffer them every day, don't we? Orthodox, scientific, I say measurement, you know, free, oh God, it just goes on and on. So boring. <clears throat> and the point is, though, 
The point about this is if you ask the same people the same questions in the same way, you'll get the same answers. It's incredible, isn't it?